The idea of the, for the Stoics is that we don't have to have an opinion about everything. And in fact, it's these opinions that we have about what other people do, about what other people think, about how things are. This is what upsets us. One of the most interesting parts of Seneca's letters is he's writing to his friend Lucilius, and, and they clearly have this exchange going where they give each other a quote. And Seneca will go, ah, I forgot to give you your quote today, or before I wrap up, let me give you your quote for the day. And it, he addresses this at one point. He says, you know, one way to get to wisdom is to find a quote, an idea, something that gets you better each day. So something that fortifies you against poverty, that makes you stronger, that makes you more virtuous. And that's what this exchange between him and Lucilius is. It's about that idea. They're bouncing quotes back and forth in the way that today we might text each other or send an email, or you might put it on the whiteboard at work. I'm Ryan Holiday. I've written these best-selling books about Stoic philosophy. I've been lucky enough to speak about it to the NBA and the NFL. NFL, sitting senators, special forces leaders. But part of my own Stoic practice is really similar to what Seneca is doing, which is I pick one quote from the Stoics each day and I try to kick it around. I meditate on it. I think about it, even if it's only for a few minutes, and then I go about my day. And actually, one of the ways I do that is with the Daily Stoic calendar, which is one quote every day. It's actually the quote that's also in the Daily Stoic. In the book itself, we have the, the meditation. But what I like about the Tearaway calendar is it's just one quick quote every day, straight from the source from Epic. Titus, Marcus Aurelius, Masonius Rufus, and uh, I just try to kick the day off with that. So I'll give you today's quote. So today's November 1st calendar is all about acceptance and amor fati. Epictetus says, don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will, and then your life will be serene. This is from the Incaridian, book eight. I think what, he, what he's saying is that like, if you need the world to be a certain way, if you want the weather to be a certain way, if you want other people to be a certain way, if you want the market to do this and not this, basically you're handing over your happiness, your security to random fate, to, to what other people say and do and think, which the Stoics would say is a recipe for disaster. You are assumptions, expectations are a recipe for disappointment, for frustration. So if instead you go around the world saying yes to how they are, accepting how they are, working with them as they are, responding to them as they are, then you're not being disappointed or let down or screwed over, right? If I can go through today thinking less about how I want things to be and more about how I want them to be as they are, I'm gonna have a better, more successful and happier day. It's funny, as I write, as I get here to write each morning, I, I pull off the day of the calendar and they all kind of blur together. But sometimes I'll have forgotten to do it for a few days or I'll have been distracted, I won't have been writing. And, and actually today's quote really fits with that. Marcus, this is Meditation 6.1, he says, when forced as it seems by circumstances into utter confusion, get a hold of yourself quickly. Don't be locked out of the rhythm any more than necessary. You'll be able to keep the beat if you are constantly returning to it. You know, a book is a long, hard slog. I've been working on this book now for more than a year. I've been on this series now for three or four years. And so I'm working on it every single day. But there are periods where I got knocked out of my rhythm. The resistance took over. I got distracted. I had you know a bunch of responsibilities with the launch of the book. The point is not to be perfect every day, but to kind of have this rhythm that you come back to. And I think this is true in writing, but it's certainly true about stoicism in general. You have the rhythm, you come back to it, right? You get jarred unavoidably by circumstances. You get knocked off, you fall short. You're not what you needed to be or should be in that day. What matters is how quickly you come back to it. It doesn't matter that I didn't do a good enough job writing yesterday or last week. What matters is did I show up today and do a good enough job? Did I show up and put in the hours today? And if I can come back to that rhythm quickly enough, I can get momentum momentum in a street going, and I won't even remember this period where I fell off. This quote from Marcus Aurelius is one of my absolute favorites. He says, you have the power to hold no opinion about a thing and not let it upset your mind. The idea of the, for the Stoics is that we don't have to have an opinion about everything. And in fact, it's these opinions that we have about what other people do, about what other people think, about how things are. This is what upsets us. It's these opinions, these impotent judgments about things that are not up to us. This is the source of our distress and frustration and anger. And so by choosing not to have an opinion, not reading into the tone of someone's email, not questioning whether whether this is good or bad for the economy, just accepting it as it is. This is the path to peace. Today's quotes from Seneca is actually one of my favorites because it's part of why I have the system of 
meditating on a quote, journaling, doing the same things every day. He says, life without design is erratic. You have to have structure. William James says, no one is to be pitied than the person who doesn't have any habits, who doesn't have systems. They're, they're making their decision every day about what they eat, what time they wake up, what time they go to bed, you know, what they say, what they don't say, how they work, how they don't work. You can't do that. You have to have systems. You have to have structure. And I think even for Seneca and Lucilius, the exchange they're having is it a form of design, a structure where they are actively pursuing and exploring wisdom together. You have to have systems, relationships. You have to design things that make you better. Otherwise, it's erratic and crazy and unpredictable. This one from Zeno today is a great reminder. Better to trip with the feet than with the tongue, right? Cato famously said that he only speaks when he's confident that what he's about to say is not better left unsaid. My mentor, Robert Greene, one of the laws of power, always say less than necessary. You can't unsay what has been said. So as I check this out in the morning, I stop myself and go, yeah, do I need to send that email? Do I need to put out that tweet? Do I need to stick my head into this, opine about that? No, I don't. I can keep silent. I can focus on what's in my control. I can focus and what I need to do, always say less than necessary, better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. This one's great. Mark Cerulli says, the straightforward and good person should be like a smelly goat in the room. You know when they are with you, right? He, he actually says in, in the Hayes translations, he doesn't like people who say, let me be straight with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. He says, what you're, the implication there is that you're not normally straight. You're not normally honest. But he says, no, it should be like a smell you can't escape. It should be a part of you. People should sense that when they're around you, you're an honest, forthcoming, forthright person. You don't pull your punches. You don't say one thing and mean another. You say what you mean. You are who you are. And if people don't like it, that's their problem. What you control is whether you're the honest, straightforward, smelly goat in the room. This one from Epictetus is basically the core of Stoic philosophy. It's basic, heard it a million times, but it's worth remembering this morning and every morning. It isn't things that disturb us, it's our judgment about them. This is our opinions are the problem. Things are objective. They are what they are, right? It's our opinion that says, no, that's bad. That's unfair. That's so-and-so's fault. It's impossible to recover from. These are opinions. These are projections. These are things we are making up about things. And so when you realize that you can stand back, you can be objective, you don't have to have an opinion or a judgment about this thing, it's a really helpful reminder today for me as I go through the day to remember, these things aren't upsetting us. My wife says this to me sometimes, someone can't frustrate you, right? That's you. You, your opinions are responsible, not them. When you step back and realize that it helps give you clarity and strength throughout the day. This is one of my all-time favorite quotes from Epictetus. It says, it's impossible to learn that which you think you already know. This is why I have it tattooed on my arm. Ego is the enemy. If you think you know everything, you're right in the sense that it becomes impossible for you to learn anything else. You cannot learn that which you think you already know by being humble, by focusing on what you don't know. Think about the Socratic method. Socrates goes around asking questions, not making assertions. The less you think you know, the more it's possible for you to learn. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe. But what I really want you to subscribe to is our daily Stoic email, one bit of Stoic wisdom, totally for free to the largest community of Stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. There's no spam. You can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it. I've sent it every day for the last six years. And I hope to see you there at dailystoic.com slash email.